So finding the area and perimeter of uh, a shape on a coordinate plane really is pretty straightforward. It actually has less to do with area and perimeter than it does just flat out distances. So for example, if you had a triangle like this, right? And you said find the perimeter and the area of this triangle. So the area and the perimeter. Those are easy if you knew these distances. The problem is on a coordinate plane, you don't know them and you have to solve for them. So remember, perimeters, you just add all the sides. So let's say I said this was three and this was four as far as their lengths. Uh, and then I solved, maybe I could do kind of Py Pythagorean theorem and I found out that this was five, right? Well, that'd be easy. Perimeter, I would just add them. Seven, okay, so then plus five. So this would be 12, you know, units. We don't have centimeters or meters or anything, so we'll just do units. Now area, all you have to know is the formula for the area of a triangle. So this would just be one half base times height. So in this case, it would just be equal to one half times four times three, right? And so obviously that comes out to whatever, six, and that would be six units squared. The problem is, is that in real life, when you're dealing with a coordinate plane, this three, four, and five, they do not give that to you. So ultimately, knowing the, the formula for the area of a triangle and knowing the formula for the perimeter of a triangle is super easy. Finding these lengths is far more complicated, right? And so they could do the same thing if they said something like, okay, well now you have a rectangle, right? And they said, okay, so you find your area and your perimeter of the rectangle. And again, if I know these, um, if I know all these side lengths over here, obviously I can just uh, do that really easily. You have like 10, I'm making these up, six. Okay, oh look, perimeter, add all the sides. If that's 10, that's 10. If that's six, that's six. So it looks like you have 10 plus 10 plus six plus six. That'd be 20, that'd be I think around 32 units, right? And everyone knows that the area of a rectangle is just your width times your length or side times side. So that would be 10 times six, which is 60 units squared. Right. And so again, it's not the, the perimeter in the area is not what's difficult about this discussion. How did I get this six and 10? A whole nother debate is being able to find the lengths of these sides for a triangle, for a rectangle, for any shape at all. Finding these lengths is by far the most difficult task. So that's what we'll do next. Okay. So while obviously a triangle might have, you know, three sides like this, we're going to look at each side totally separately when it comes to finding the distances of each side. So I'm going to be drawing segments, but you have to understand that that segment will eventually be part of a triangle or part of a rectangle. And here's basically the breakdown of um, what's going on with these things. So, so there's, there's sort of three possibilities, right? You could have a vertical line, you could have a horizontal line and you can have a diagonal line and you're going to be able to sort of find the uh, lengths of each of these. Now, in the case of a vertical or a horizontal line, the distance is super easy. On a coordinate plane, you could basically just count over one, two, three, four, five, right? And use the grid system to count. Same thing vertically. You could be like one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up. I'll show you how to do it with points, but also you could just count. Diagonal is you cannot count. You don't know the slope. You don't know how much of each box is going up. This is much more difficult. So we'll do, first we're going to do vertical, then horizontal, and then later diagonal, and you'll understand how to find those. So again, given this vertical line, you could absolutely just count up and you'd get, you know, maybe use a ruler and measure, but the way to do it um, algebraically using the points is actually just as easy. So let's pretend like this was you know, I don't know, three, and this was, you know, two, and all the way up to here, right? So let's say this point was three, two, and just making this up, let's say this point was three, eight. You'll notice that your x values are the same, which is an indicator that it is vertical. The x does not change. Three over, three over, three over, three over. What changes is um, how high it goes, right? And so all you do to find the distance of a vertical line is subtract the y values. This is flat out eight minus two. So clearly this is six units tall, so to speak, right? So on a vertical line, it's really easy to either count up or just subtract your Y values and you get your height. One thing I'll warn you about, if you do choose to use this technique, which you should, which is subtracting the Y's, be careful when you have some negative values. So let me show you what I mean, right? So what if your vertical line looked like this, right? And you have something down here in this kind of fourth coordinate or, uh, 
uh, fourth quadrant, the quadrants are one, two, three, four. What if you had a point down in your fourth quadrant and one in your first? And so let's say back to the kind of three, let's say this was three, negative six, and let's say this was, you know, who cares, three, three, right? Now, what's weird here is the distance between these y values. Remember, we actually subtracted them, and it doesn't matter what order you go in. You could say y minus y or y minus y, but you do not add them. Adding them would be wrong. That would be negative 6 plus 3, which would be negative 3. Absolute value, that that's 3. You do not add them. You subtract them. So let's do 3 minus right, negative 6, and let's see what we get for that. Let me get this here. So we have 3 minus negative 6. And remember, whenever you minus a minus, that becomes a plus. So that's 3 plus 6. The distance would be 9 units. And so it's the same thing. I think you'll get them right, but I just have to warn you when it comes to negatives. And by the way, if you went the other way, that's legal too. If you said negative 6 minus 3, right? If you did this y minus this y, it would be negative 9. That's still correct because whenever it comes to distance, you're going to absolute value the distance which just means whatever it is, make it positive, right? And so that's vertical line. So let's do the same thing. You could probably guess for horizontal line, it's almost an identical process, right? For a horizontal line, what's interesting, something like this is you'll see that actually it's your Y value that's constant and it's your X values <laughs> that are changing, right? So this might be like, it looks like it's about over two. Let's call this two, you know, whatever, three. And this one, this could be all the way over 10, three, right? The X is clearly one, two, all the way up to 10, but the Y does not change. Now your distance in this case would not be the difference of Y's obviously, it'd be the difference of X's. So if you're horizontal line, you just say, okay, I have 10 minus two, so my distance is eight, right? And that's easy. And the same thing goes for, okay, well, what if I had, you know, a bunch of negative values, right? Um, what if I had something like this, okay? No problem, same thing. This would be, you know, again, making these values up. This could be like negative three, negative four, right? And then I know that my Y value doesn't change. So this would be like three, negative four. Notice my X's do change, but my Y don't. Okay, no problem. Three, X minus X minus negative three. That's three plus three. Again, it's six, right? So it's easy to find your distances when it comes to the uh, vertical or horizontal lines, but what's m what is much harder is the diagonal line. So we'll do that next. Okay, and so let's say we have a diagonal line like this, right? And let's say that this is, you know, I'm making these numbers up, but let's say this is 2 comma 8, and this over here is, so that was 2, 8. So we'll call this like, you know, I don't know, um, 7 comma 3 right? And there's no way to find this, right? There's this crazy complicated distance formula, which I'll teach you, but there's really no way to find this. What you can do, now this is the trick of all tricks, right? This is what's cool. What you can do is, if you think about it, you can turn any diagonal line into a right triangle by finding its vertical and horizontal components. So, so again, I'm the whole, my whole job here <laughs> is to find this distance and weirdly, to do so, it makes sense to draw a right triangle. Look, don't you agree that this down here absolutely represents this red line? These, these vertical and horizontal components are a part of a right triangle that re represents this red line as the hypotenuse. And now, because I know quickly how to find vertical distances, y minus y, looks like this would be 5, right? And then I can find my, my horizontal because seven minus two, five. Now I can basically solve for X, right? Is that cool? Here's what I do. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You probably remember that from when you're a kid. Well, you probably still are a kid. All right, here you do. Here's what you do. Five squared plus five squared equals X squared, right? So you have 25 plus 25 equals X squared. Then you definitely have uh, 50 equals x squared. Don't forget to root both sides to get x alone. And your answer would be root 50. Okay. Now this is like the super cool guy way to do it because I'm going to show you the distance formula, which is annoying because you have to memorize it. But what I just did is the origin of why they even invented the distance formula, right? So let's do the same diagonal length, not using my cool little secret technique. We're going to do it the traditional way. And you can see why you get the same answer. And then I'll let you decide which one's cooler. Okay, so now this is the distance formula, right? 
Distance between any two points is this crazy formula like this. Okay, and all you do is you find the difference of the x's, so this is x minus x, and you find the difference of the y's, x minus y, and then you square those values and then you root them. So looking at this, we have distance equals a huge root sign again. What's x minus x? 2 minus 7 is negative 5 squared is 25 or go the other way it doesn't matter 7 minus 2 is positive 5 squared either way the difference of the x's is 5 or negative 5 and when you square them they become positive anyways right so it doesn't matter which way you went plus difference in the y's what's 8 minus 3 8 minus 3 is 5 in here 5 squared is 25 again just to be proved you can go either way 3 minus 8 is negative 5 negative 5 squared is 25 so guess what the difference here, or excuse me, the distance here is root of, add those, 50. And remember, we got the same value when we did our cooler way, our cool guy way, which is this. And that's basically because it is the exact same formula. I just don't like to memorize formulas. So for me, visually, picturing a right triangle is the same as doing this big fancy distance formula. And so when you have these different shapes, this is what you're going to do. If you're really lucky, They'll say, find the perimeter and area of this rectangle, right? Oh, great, because I have vertical lines and horizontal lines. That's awesome. If you're unlucky, they could say something like this. Find the perimeter and um, area of this. These are both horrible. This one's good because it's uh, horizontal. Terrible because it's diagonal. Terrible because it's diagonal. You could do my way, break them down like this, and find X. You know, this is, again, could be broken into a right triangle, and you can find x, or you can use your distance formula, but either way, find every side of your shape, whether it's vertical, horizontal, or diagonal, find those lengths, and add them all for perimeter, or use them to find the area based on the area formula, and that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and good luck on this section.